more expression of the Coffee County Board of Education to order for December 9, 2021. Uh, indication, Dr. Banks, That's great. Dear Precious Father, we thank you for this opportunity tonight. Father God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit, our comfort and our keeper. We ask, Father God, as we are here tonight assembled in this work session, we ask, Father God, that you continue to allow us to do great things to impact the lives of our stakeholders in this community. We ask, Father God, for all of our children, our students that go to school every day. We ask, Father God, that you continue to strengthen them, bless them. And I pray, Father God, that anything that's on their minds that's wearing them down, any contemplation of doing things detrimental to their health, I pray, Father God, that we will be able to just talk to them and educate them about the goodness of life, about the fruitful things that can happen in life if we take care of ourselves and listen to our elders. And I ask, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we will work together in this meeting, that we will do the things that's feasible as we move forward. I ask, Father God, that you touch all certified and classified staff within our school system. And I pray, Father God, that you allow us to be on one accord. And as we get closer and closer to Christmas Day or Christmas morning, I pray, Father God, that you will have the kids do things decently and in order. And I pray that we might not all have the gifts that we want, but we do have the gift of life. And I ask, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you will continue to allow us to do great things. Anybody that's on the bed of affliction tonight, I pray, Father God, for healing of their body. Because I know that by your stripes, we are healed. And I ask this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, everybody got a copy of the agenda? Yes, sir. Any questions? Any motion to adopt the agenda? Move we adopt the agenda as presented. I say the president. Mr. Wade, second. All in favor? Okay. What least? Yes, sir. I want to welcome all of our visitors here tonight and uh, just uh, send out a, a, a word of, of prayer for our board member, uh, Miss Tiny Wilkerson, who's not with us tonight. I know she's dealing with some, some health issues, and, and we just want to keep her family and her in our thoughts and prayers. And uh, we will move forward with our meeting. Um, school update. We have Miss Mary Vickers, who is here. Uh, from Ambrose Elementary School and it's going to give us an update from Ambrose. So welcome Dr. Vickers if you want to come to the podium. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> um, before I begin I had um, several of my admin team I asked them if they wanted to come tonight and join me and the first response was I they, I mean every one of them had somewhere to be and I said well it is a busy time the holiday so I'll, I'll excuse y'all because I'm the <laughs> 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 they had to exercise and practice and all this stuff so anyway um, I'm just glad to be able to to share Ambrose with y'all um, first of all I know that y'all have um, been aware that we have the cultivation stations which is our outdoor classroom um, that was established in 2019 and we have enjoyed that area in our school so much. Um, the kids um, get to see the different um, plants and vegetables grow and um, we've actually um, shared a lot with them growing some of the um, when we get the produce gathered in. and it's just been a, a, a real um, positive thing on the campus to see and the next picture is going to show some more of the um, things that we actually gathered from the garden. If you can tell there on the plate, we gathered the um, uh, okay. <laughs> we gathered this, the okra and they cooked it and then they had, um, we actually used our pear tree and made some pear tarts. I know you ladies know those mm -hmm. pear tarts. Um, we just have had a real success. Um, last year was a little bit different because we weren't able to bring in the community like we had been, um, but now we're starting to hope to start bringing some of that back in. But um, as you can see, it's beautiful and everyone's um, enjoying the, the vegetables off of the garden. The next picture is the parts that we added this past year. We added the hydroponic um, part of, um, <laughs> that sounds so, so um, you know, like we know what we're talking about. <laughs> 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 People come like this, the hydroponic. <laughs> this is the, <laughs> we um, were able to add the part where we had without the soil, you know, it's just the water system and we have um, the system that has a constant drain. 
Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to produce things at, up to a certain point, and then we had to transplant them because they were just not um, quite equipped with some of the things that we had planted in there. It got kind of large. We moved it to our um, greenhouse, which is the bigger picture there to your left. Um, and that was an added addition this past year. We were added a little gray house, and so uh, we we add things and, and making it um, be successful. Um, here's when some of the students had used their plants and had um, went out there, and I'm, I'm telling you, those kids would go out there and want to see how much their their own little plant from the seed they planted, how much they had grown. And so that's again some of the kids there showing you know, their plants. Um, we partnered with the FFA. They went around not just our school, but with some of the other elementary schools and helped planted some, um, plant some fruit trees. Um, we had already had the addition in some of, already in our part of our outdoor garden, but they came. Um, Mr. Highsmith has been great. He brought um, some of his students and they actually, it was amazing. I said we should record it because they really did a, a great job explaining to the kids the parts of the plants and, and why they were adding in this cow. Um, black cow dirt and they, they just did a really good job of about explaining to them what was happening to the process of, of you know how they were planting it. So that was um, a good thing with partnering with the FFA um, kids. We also use it for other, re uh, other reasons. We had the sheriff's department come out and um, this was of course with the um, doing some outdoor not just for our the plants but they actually were um, sharing some safety things here with the cultivation station so that was how we use the outdoor classroom we moved to inside and we have the stem lab and um as you can see the kids they it's the most i reckon the most noisiest is it has it's just a, an area that when you go in there it's like oh you want don't want to stay long because it gets so noisy sometimes but then sometimes it's like you want to see the excitement of the kids but they really get started in there and get to working and it's just great to see them get together in teams and um, a lot of it is with teamwork that they um, design this. This is not robotics, this is just the robots at this point. They're just learning how the different parts and assembling, mainly teamwork. Um, they've done actual made little cars and boat racing. They've done some exploration type thing um, with gravity and those kind of things. And then they have had some art music type things. So that's been a, a good thing that's going on. We have um, on Unity Day, we try to throughout the year, um, we've really been focusing on being kind and some of the positive characteristics for the kids. So that was just one of our days that we celebrated um, via the Unity Day. The bullies, no, bull, no bully. Okay. Um, here's the veterans program that we had. Um, Mr. Loving, I know y'all are all familiar with him. He comes out and just does a great job with the um, help with making the kids they just you know they're, they're just uh, famous actors and, and singers up there but they do a good job and then the veterans we've had several of them to comment and say what an amazing feeling they have when they leave it's just such a good it's one of those days when you leave school you're just like this is a good day you know just had a good day that day but that was a good uh, program that was going on Trojans, you know we have the support that adopt the Trojan program and they come out and the kids um, were able to join and, and you know just talk to the Trojans some of them read books to them and as you can see down there in the lunchroom the Trojans go around and see their former principal I mean uh, teachers or whoever and, and of course the lunchroom ladies are always always one of their favorites so that's why I chose that picture we celebrate and celebrate and celebrate <laughs> student success we celebrate the academics we celebrate um, characteristics we try to incorporate all areas because we know not all kids are academically um, successful sometimes so we try to incorporate things that's not just about academics and that's what the um, Golden Eagle part is down at the bottom on the right is those kids are ch chosen for different things that they've done for the month of um, from their classroom we have each uh, grade level that turns in a name and those kids are celebrated too so that's just some celebration things this is probably one of the um, most just um, very successful and one of the things that our kids still talk about even kids when they leave Ambrose is our Eagles Nest um, we do a monthly it's, it's all about the student advocacy part and, and trying to make sure that all kids have an adult in the building that they a caring adult that they can go to if they have any problems if they just want to know it's just need a hug that day or just something every child has a caring adult in the building so um, once a month we meet with them 
um, that the teens usually are about, or your group is usually about eight, it takes about eight to 10 for each adult to have. So it's not just, you know, of course not one per child. So in, in this particular time, we did the Know Your Worth, that was um, that month, last month that we um, had just finished the Be Kind. And some of the kids um, wrote post-it notes or notes to their friends or someone else. And I just thought some of those were precious. You know, they were, you were pretty, I like you. When you play, you matter to me. And then some of them, they just really were, the, of course, the older they got, the kids just really, some of them really getting the meaning of it. You know, they, and it's a good thing, a good feeling for us to know that we're making a difference. And we take it a step further. When our fifth grades leave us and go to sixth grade, um, every adult or every child, every fifth grader has an adult at school that follows them until they graduate. And I know Adam and different ones has had an Ambrose, former Ambrose um, student, and they still, like right now, I have uh, every year, see, I still have like sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, all the way up. So you have a connection with those kids, and the main thing that we do is we send them a little note. It, you know, sometimes we'll send a little treat with them, but mostly is that we send little notes or, you know, something just says, how's it going, just trying to keep up with you, How, you know, are you doing okay if you need me, or, you know, we just try to keep in touch with them, and we have several, when they come back for the senior walk, when they come back that year, they'll say, you know, thank you for those little notes, and they'll just talk about how, you know, how um, it's great to know that they're still being thought of. Now, I know Miss, um, <laughs> Miss Jackie in the front probably didn't appreciate it because we send we send like today, y'all. It was huge boxes and packages having to come because we send them then to each we send them to wherever the schools they are and then they have to divide them up. If y'all been up there, y'all probably seen them. You've seen them, too. but it is. It's, I know we, but I try to talk to everybody. Say y'all, it begins a begins, begins a problem. Y'all, please let us know. We you know we don't want to be a problem. But the main thing is that we want those kids to feel like they still have a connection and somebody to to talk to if they need to. <clears throat> we uh, just teamwork here, just talking about what a great team I have. I mean, it's amazing at the work they put in for those kids. I mean, they just really work together. Really good um, teamwork. Um, and then the office crew, if you can see us, we're the five, the, those ten little monkeys, actually little five little monkeys jumping on the bed. And I was the mama, and uh, Dr. Randy Drew over there, he was the, the doctor. But we had a good day that day, just dressing up and having everything. The kids, you know, anything that you do, the kids love it. But the teamwork is what counts, is everybody works such good together. And we try to celebrate our staff. We try to make them feel like they are um, just appreciated. Um, we do a lot of things like um, try to do wellness things, just things like celebrating, giving them a little a little boost that day of, of trees. And we started this year, if you'll notice it's down at the gym, we started trying to have some activities, but not just for our, you know, for the giving you some something to eat, but we tried to um, give them some mind things, some mindsets of just having that time to relax. And Gina Gibbs actually came out that day. And we were so, uh, at first, everybody that was walking in there was going, oh gosh, what are we going to do, you know? How, what's she going to make us do? How we, you know? But y'all, it was such a relief. Everyone in there afterwards, it's almost like yoga kind of type thing she had done with them that day. But it was amazing. If you can see some of the faces, of course, we had to spread out. I was like, COVID. No, but it was just, it was a good day. And so we've tried to um, continue doing some of those type of activities, having some wellness with, you know, our staff, having some, you know, mental wellness, not just physical, but um, that was a good, good thing we started. And that's um, a part of Ambrose, that right there is just sharing some things, the highlights that, that we have. That's great. Any questions about Keep it up. All right, we appreciate it. Thank y'all. Thank you. Appreciate all that you're doing out there, Mary. And the cultivation station is really something else. It is. It is. It is. All right. Uh, minutes. We have our minutes from the last meeting, last month, the work session and regular meeting. Uh, board members, any comments, questions about those? <laughs> If it meets the consent of the board, we would place those on the consent agenda for the regular meeting. And 
The next item on the agenda is the financial report. We have the first report there, which is the November financials. And we had a beginning fund balance of $21,292,555.42. And the end of month is $21,289,684.50. The next report is the comparison. As you'll see, we have the four-year comparison of data there. Uh, end of month for November, $21,289,684.50. Notice that we increased from the last month <coughs> tax revenue. Of course, our property taxes are coming in and uh, we'll continue to build the fund balance throughout the next couple of months. The next report is the detail. Any questions about that? And this does reflect uh, the one-time supplement that we did for all employees last month. So that is reflected in the current fund balance. And then the next item on the agenda is the November East Loss Report. And uh, you'll see the collections for $619,860.48. I was talking with one of the managers over at Phelps earlier. And she said they had a real strong customer base the week before Thanksgiving. She said this year was the week before Thanksgiving and they really came out. So, be reflected next month. We'll see that. Any questions about this report? All right. The next item is the Action Pack Grant Head Start. And we have a visitor here with us this evening. And if y'all want to come forward and introduce yourselves and, and tell us a little bit about what uh, you've got going on. Well, we do appreciate the opportunity. My name is uh, Brian Singleton, uh, Executive Director with Action Pack. Uh, I've got with me uh, Miss Angela Carr, who is our Assistant uh, Head Start Director and uh, Douglas Native. And uh, what we're coming to you to talk about today is, uh, um, first off, I want to appreciate the, the long time collaboration uh, and, and operating the Head Start with the school system. Uh, Y'all been a great partner and uh, helping us transition the children to kindergarten and helping them uh, prepare for that. And uh, we want to present you with an opportunity to, uh, to uh, actually even grow that collaboration, um, working currently with the, uh, the city, the county, and, uh, and certainly the, uh, the school system, and, uh, and, and with Action Pack to expand the, uh, the Head Start Center. Um, I've got a little information here for you I'll pass out. And you'll see I put the, uh, the the pictures on front that would certainly tell the a lot of the reason for the expansion. As you know, the, the Head Start Center itself sits kind of on the right there with the uh, the I believe the middle school, and we um, it's actually high and dry, but then the cafeteria slopes down to a kind of collect all the water collects there it's a, it sits on top of what used to be i think the uh, swimming pool 
and um, it still collects a lot of water. It, it has flooded. We use it for a um, a warming center for the for the for the meals, and uh, we cannot uh, have the children in there anymore because of the flooding issue. So we are we are proposing um, met with uh, with uh, Mr. Charlie Davis, and, and the city has agreed to write for a CDBG grant to expand the, the center with two additional classrooms, which will uh, actually eliminate our waiting list for children that are currently on the waiting list and will also uh, provide a uh, space for a, a commercial kitchen and a multi-purpose uh, dining room. And so, uh, again, you'll see the pictures there. The, uh, we'll go through all the, all the details as far as the, uh, the uh, you'll see the waiting list numbers there and some of the demographics of the area. But again, it's, it's, it's certainly, uh, the, the need is, is obviously there from the from the, uh, the pictures you see. And again, we uh, are hoping to uh, get this on the, it's actually the June 1st cycle, but uh, uh, if you're familiar, you're with, familiar with CDBG grants, they too, do take a, quite a while to put together and the regional commission will be writing for that grant. Any questions I can answer just on the grant request. I will say the, uh, kind of use some numbers, the, the grant itself is for 750,000. The estimated uh, cost of the uh, of the expansion is 1.1 million. Um, Action Pack, we can put in. Uh, we're a private nonprofit, but we're able to put in uh, 50,000 in, uh, in Head Start and Head Start dollars without creating a federal a federal interest in the building, which we certainly want to avoid creating that. And then uh, we're coming to the uh, the uh, the school system and the county for the additional amount, which is 300,000 to, to to match that uh, with 150,000 apiece. To, to expand the, the Head Start Center. Yes, so. And you are applying for the CBD. The, the CBG that will be through the cities, actually using their their each the city can do it every year. They're using theirs this year just for this project. Great. And this building, if you're not familiar with it, it's the old. When I was in junior high school, what they used it as the locker room, and we we had to go in there and dress out for for sports in there and it was pretty pretty rough then and that's been over 30 years ago so that's been uh it's been there a long time and it's, it's pretty pretty rugged building they've done a great job trying to keep it up but it's yeah. i think it's uh at this point i think it's past being able to be repaired and uh, in fact that, that's kind of the plan is to bulldoze that um bring that up to, to grade so we'll have the flooding issue and actually have parking there and then expand off the side of the front door Yes, sir. You talking about taking everything down and coming back? Not not the whole building, just okay. that just that piece that's flooding. That's the old, uh, the old our old cafeteria, the old locker room. The rest of the building is in uh, wonderful shape, and it's actually up, up higher. So no flooding issue there. Is the plan to raise? Yes, it is to bring some dirt in, raise it up, mm -hmm. but still we're going to leave it as parking, right? And uh, just so we don't have to bring too much dirt in. But then there's enough higher just just past that where the current playground is, and we can just relocate the playground and add the add the building on just to attach onto there. About is it right around 1,800 square feet? So appreciate you coming by. Sure. Right. Well, thank you so much. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you for for coming over and presenting to the board. All right. Thank All right. you. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. Appreciate what you're doing for the children. Oh, well, thank you. We couldn't do it without your collaboration. Yes, sir. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Coffee Middle School whiteboards and projectors. We have been working towards replacing the, the whiteboards and projectors in all of our schools and uh, at this time the uh, technology department has been working with the administration at the middle school to uh, move forward with replacing and upgrading the antiquated whiteboards and so we have uh, a proposal here that we are asking the board to approve tonight and uh, bids were taken and uh, as you'll see Mr. Evans has a uh, bid tally sheet there 
and South Coast Supply was the low bid with $64,899.69. And we're asking the board to approve this tonight with the supply chain issues that everybody's experiencing. Uh, we'd like to go ahead and get this order in so that they can get the equipment and uh, go ahead and move forward with getting it installed. And this would be the same model that we used in our new schools that we've constructed and then also the schools where we've been replacing this equipment with the new with the new equipment so uh, the next school that is planned to do this project with and the same work would be at george washington carver uh, Ninth grade academy um, it would be once we get this done and you're planning to do this work well typically it's a summer process so go ahead and knock out the middle school this summer and then freshman be on the slate for the following uh, unless there's a, a need to move it forward to that and if we worry about supply but we just go in and get what we need to do it yeah I'm just asking that I don't know no, no, pleasure the board that, that'd be great uh, just at, at this point we've got one one project plan but if we'd like like to go ahead and plan another yeah, some of its capacity we do some of the work with our own people and but we certainly look at getting that done ASAP. It's a relatively smaller school, so it would be as, as as big as doing two schools at once, but you know, it's about a third of the new school. So <coughs> might not be too bad. You know, if you order more you might get a better price. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just questioning. I know they need something over there too, you know. So. If we're going to do it, just my sort of thing. Well, we'd like the board to approve this tonight, and we get a we get a bid on. Can you do an add-on? Can, can, can we ask them for it? Yeah, I guess we could. Yeah, if that's uh, pleasure for the board. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we can see. I don't want to hold up this project. Right, we're trying right. to negotiate that. But yeah, we could. Uh, when can you have something ready on that? I'll take a look at it next week. And okay. Have it next week, end of January. That's a pretty good way to also. It is. Yeah, you should be able to get us something together on that. Yeah, the, the issue we were running into by um, is the projectors. We, they said if we ordered in December, it would be about April before we could get them. And so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. we'll go ahead. And, yeah. Yeah, I, and you would think they'd give us the same price. So certainly try. And the how uh, many classrooms were there? Does anybody know? Yeah, well, 30, about, about thirty-five. Not, about thirty-five is there. A lot less than that. Yeah. So, yeah. And then uh, just East Block, East Block Mine. Yeah, yes, sir. Tracy, can we can we do that, or we? Well, since I, I mean, we need to do that with our procurement procedure since we bid this out you know we really need to go forward with this and bid do another one and we can we can turn around and do it immediately we won't have to have it out there because this won't be as, as much yeah, the cost adjusted, won't be yeah, if i adjusted this and posted it you know, about before we got out for the break um, mid january we could have the bids in mm -hmm. we, and you know, it requires that 28 day process out of our procurement Yeah, the request is to approve this for this tonight. For tonight. Yeah, this then we'll, then we'll, we'll come back with that immediately. Right. I mean, we weren't prepared to come in here and do. No, I thought he was asking about, about yeah. you know, whatever. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Typically, the way we've done it is just a, you know, a school or two like that. So we need to prove this now. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll move forward with this. So here's the installation bid also was in it. So there's three parts, the whiteboards, projectors, and then the installation. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. I 
and serve. And y'all will be starting on that. Well, the, we're in the planning phase now. It's slated to start when the when school lets out. That's right. So, you know, pretty disruptive to the school. We yeah. try to do that. In yeah. summer. That's right. Or in, during the school term. Yeah. So, That's right. And, and, and when we do work like this, we would like to just do it all all at once, but you know, there are capacity issues that, that come into play. So anyways, all right. We're kind of excited for the middle school day. We decided to possibly relocate the board and projector and reorient and move some furniture around and just freshen yeah. up the school just a little bit. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, school nutrition. Got surplus property here. Miss Lewis, you have surplus property. Yes, sir. Discuss. The, right. um, the 12 camera kits are um, were purchased before I came back, and I've been working with Mr. Evans, and they're not compatible with our current system at our school, so that's why those are on there. The rest of the equipment, with the exception of the oven and griddle, are non-working items and are in Ambrose in the warehouse. So we're trying to clean out some space out of the warehouse. So I'm asking the board to approve this as surplus property. I guess all this stuff's pretty old. Yes, sir. The, most of the items, with the exception of the three things I mentioned, are in Ambrose old gym and are not, they're not working and not repairable. How big a scale is that? Is that like when you... It's huge. <laughs> All right. Huge. huge. <laughs> Very big. <laughs> it can that's weigh a person. Well, that's what I was wondering. <laughs> you know, uh, Careful. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. And this will sit for the next 30 days yes, and we'll sir. come back to the board next, next month, month and ask for approval. Yes, sir. All right, great. So this is not, we're not asking for approval tonight on this. Uh, let me see. West Green Elementary School facility plan. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Jowers and myself met with the West Green Governing Council this morning. And uh, we presented to them a draft plan replacing West Green Elementary School and basically building a new West Green Elementary School. So we're really excited about moving forward with that project. And uh, we met Dr. Banks and myself and Mr. Spikes met yesterday with the facilities consultant for the state and walk through our, our new five-year facility plan with him yesterday and we're in the process of putting that together it takes a few months because the plan has to go up to the state department of education and they have to sign off on it and then it comes back to y'all in march or april and then y'all hopefully will approve our five-year facility plan and then we will send it to the State Department of Education or the State Board of Education to be approved after it is approved here by our local board. So there's some steps that we have to go through with getting the facility plan approved. But the number one item on the facility plan uh, that will start July 1 will be a new West Green Elementary School. Of course, we'll keep the existing gym and keep the wings that have been built in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, we will keep the, the, the newest parts of the school, but then replace all of the older buildings. And uh, so the next step is to phase out those older buildings. And by phasing those out, that means we can continue to use them. We could use them indefinitely. Uh, but once we phase them out, they will not be part of our official facilities plan anymore, which means that they'll be eligible for replacement. And uh, that means we will be able to seek some state reimbursement for replacement of those older buildings that will be will be demolished and, and we will put new construction in their place. 
So what you have tonight that we're asking you to approve is a resolution that will phase those those older buildings out. And it says, uh, whereas the Coffee County Board of Education has determined that the cost of upgrading the six oldest uh, of the nine buildings composing West Green Elementary facility is greater than any potential state funding and would constitute an unwise use of local funds as evidenced in the attached estimates provided by the district's architectural firm and whereas none of the six buildings will continue to be used for any K-12 school purpose and whereas the Coffee County Board of Education intends to demolish the listed buildings be it therefore resolved that the Coffee County Board of Education is phasing out all buildings, phasing out buildings 2020, 2030, 2040, 2050, 2060, and 2070 of the West Green Elementary facility, which is building school 3052. And uh, by approving this, we will then send this to the state board and they will uh, phase those buildings out. We'll, we will build new buildings into place. So uh, this is, uh, and then you'll see the letter from the architect that includes uh, some square footage for each one of those buildings and then what the replacement or what, what the cost to renovate them would be. And uh, you'll see that the cost of renovation would be, be very costly. And so instead of renovating those buildings and getting them up to speed, we will just demolish them and replace them. And, uh, we met with the governing council this morning and what we talked about was, was certainly the, the new facilities plan will be approved in June, July we will start the new facilities plan and hopefully within 12 months uh, we would be close to ready to put it out for bid and, go ahead and move forward with, with constructing a new West Green Elementary School. So we will have to use portable players. Yes sir, we talked about some portables to house some of the students uh, who were in the oldest parts of the building and uh, why we construct the new, the new building. So, all right. Any questions? What would be the estimated new construction start if everything goes as planned? I would say 16 months probably would be probably as, as soon. That'd be a long as we, we should be able to get some of the next summer. But yeah. A year from now. Right. Yeah. State, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. What y'all were Well, the idea, you know, the, the ROTC multi-purpose facility was the number one on the East Blast. And so we're, we're getting closer to be ready to put that out for bid. So as soon as I'm thinking once we get that project up and going, then we come back and we'll be hopefully ready to bid this project. So. Any questions? Any other questions? <clears throat> yes, sir. All right. The uh, board meeting dates, the tentative board meeting dates. Are there any questions about that? Look at those last month. Put them on the table. All right. If there's no questions, concerns about those meeting dates, we will ask the board to approve those as part of the consent agenda. Are there any other questions? No questions. We will. I will ask the board if we move to an executive session to discuss uh, personnel list as presented and and uh, 
the employment and property, also employment personnel, and then also real estate, as Mr. Gower pointed out. Motion. Uh, move we exit to executive session. Well, I'll move a motion to exit the session. I move we exit the session. Second. Question. Way on favor. Uh, uh, work session is adjourned.